All right, this is Niz with Nizcast, and we're going to be looking at another video focusing on bloodlust. So in this video, uh, I've just taken a random replay, like I said I would, um, off the Han site, and we're going to be looking at it from Voodoo Jester and Maraxis' point of view. So we're heading out to the lanes here. We're 15 seconds into the game. First of all, what we need to do is, as we're heading to the lanes, well, before we're heading to the lanes, we should figure out what their possible lanes on the enemy team could be. So the enemy team has Devour, Mage Bane, Puppet Master, Glacius, and Revenant. So they can lane this a couple different ways. They could put Devourer mid, they could put Puppet Master mid, or they could put Revenant mid. Those are all three relatively common mids. You know, maybe Puppet and Devourer are the most common mids out of their team. So if they were to lane um, Puppet mid or whatever, or Devourer mid, chances are we're going to be up against a Mage Bane Glacius top. However, we have a Parasite on our team. So the enemy team might decide to put Mage Bane, the hard carry, bottom, in a two versus one situation um, to you know help him get a little bit more farm um, so we don't exactly know what their lanes are going to be but we're trying to find out we're going to use the mini map and we're going to see colors appear from the enemy team to figure out what heroes we're up against so okay I just advanced it a little bit we're 16 seconds into the game here and we've seen their mid we've seen it's puppet master okay if you don't remember the colors and you can't remember which heroes which color immediately off the start that's fine if you can get used to that, that's amazing. It's a cool advantage, but it's not 100% necessary. So, you know, we've got a couple seconds here that we can actually look. Okay, it's light blue mid. We're just looking at the mini-maps. Light blue mid. All right, who is that? Okay, that's Puppet Master. We can check there. That's fine. Cool. Let's advance. Advancing, advancing, advancing. We're watching the mini-map. We're watching down here. Watching the mini-map. Watching. We're also, well, we're also looking up here in our lane to make sure nothing else happened. And we just saw a hero bottom. So that's gray, okay, which is going to be Mage Bane, but let's just assume it's gray. We don't know the colors yet. Well, if we can't remember the colors and which heroes which, we can also look and see which heroes on their team have a lot of ganking power at level 1. That they can immediately kill someone at level 1. One of the heroes that's really going to raise a flag is Devourer. Devourer's just scary. He's always scary, but level 1 he's scary. Level 2 he's scary. He's just scary. <laughs> so let's advance here a little bit further. Okay, we've seen brown bottom as well. We haven't seen pink. So we do know that their bottom is going to be Mage Bane Revenant, but let's just assume all we know, we don't know which heroes are which, we just know it's not Devour. So at this point, uh oh. Devour is not mid, Devour is not bottom. He could be bottom setting up a gank or something in the trees. He could be mid setting up a gank. He could be top. Okay, so he could be up here with, you know, Glacius. That's fine. But we also have to keep in mind that it could be at the side here. Or here. Which is bad. Now I'm going to advance it a little bit more. And now we've just got sight up here. Where is top? Uh oh. This isn't good. We don't know where top is. We're kind of advanced. Chances are they're at our side here. Or they're ganking mid or something. We need to be really, really careful. So now I'm going to switch it to spectator view. And we're going to find out Glacius and Devour are off to the side here. Okay, so let's see what happens. We're advancing a little bit here. Okay, we've seen Devour and Glacius. This isn't good. So in my first video, I talked about knowing um, what kind of abilities people are going to have and uh, the kill power in the lane. So we know off level 1, Voodoo Jester most likely is going to get his stun. That's pretty much what you get at level 1 Voodoo Jester. Maraxxus, level 1, he's going to have his stun. That's level 1, that's what you get on Maraxxus. What is Devourer going to have? Well, you can go two different routes. Some Devourers like to get Hook first, some like to get Rot or Decay first. So we don't know what he's going to have. Glacius, same idea. Some Glacius like to get Ice Imprisonment first, some like to get Tundra Blast first. I tend to like Tundra Blast, but this one chooses to go with Ice Imprisonment. But we don't actually know which one he's gone with. So, let's advance. Okay, we've seen Rot, or Decay, sorry. Um, so we've seen that go out. Now, that's not good. We also have to figure out which hero they're going to go for. Well, we've got Voodoo Jester with 492 health. He's a squishy little end hero. And we've got Marax with a shield and 644 health. They're going to go for Voodoo Jester. He's just the easier kill. Okay, so we already know who they're going to target or who they should target. So, what we need to do is, now that we've seen this Devourer use his Decay, we need to find a way to get away from Decay. So the best way to do that is probably Voodoo Jester throw out a stun. And then Voodoo Jester tries to run away. Now Glacius' job is to 
keep that voodoo jester in the decay so that he can't get away so that he's slowed and we're going to be able to you know keep damage on him and make sure he dies so we can't get away At the same time Maraxis, you need to use your stun to react to Glacius slowing and trying to lock down Voodoo Jester and to help him get further and further away. Now, because this Glacius got ice imprisonment, if Voodoo Je if Maraxis is stunned at the right time, um, chances are Voodoo Jester might still be locked in the rot, but Maraxis can use his body to block Devourer to buy a couple seconds for Voodoo Jester to get out of that rot. Now, they could switch over to Maraxis, that's fine, but you know, Maraxis has a lot more health, he's got that shield, he's going to last longer. Anyways, let's continue and see what happens as we pan out here. Okay, we just saw Voodoo Jester threw out his stun, Glacius froze Voodoo Jester, and Maraxis threw out his stun. Everyone used every ability. <laughs> so, we've got tons of overlap, and we're going to see what happens. So, Voodoo Jester isn't able to get away from that rot. He's still stuck in that rot when Devourer comes out of it, so he's still slowed. Now, instead of Voodoo Jester running directly down in the lane towards his tower, he's going to try to juke through the trees. Now, let's see what happens. He's taking a little bit of damage here. Now, he's going down here. He's trying to go under here. It's a nice little juke spot. He's going to eat this tree and try to come out the other side. Now, he goes around the corner here. Pathing screws him up a little bit. He turns around. He's going to eat more rot damage, an auto attack from Devour, and an auto attack from Glacius. So, he's going to eat that tree, and he's dead. So that didn't go as planned. Voodoo Jester is now dead. His stun was still on 9 second cooldown. But, Maraxis had 1 second on his stun. So had we waited 1 second, we would have been in a better position. But, Glacius' freeze also just came up. Anyways, let's continue. Uh, actually, no. Let's back it up. See what would have happened. Had, uh, yeah, here we are. Let's assume this Voodoo Jester, if we follow my cursor, is just running directly down. I'm trying to do it at the right time, right speed. So, let's pause it. So we're right around this little brown mark. Okay, starting it up again. He's still moving down. Probably would have died around here. He took a little bit of extra damage, so he probably would have got even further. But he would have died here, which is in tower range. That's assuming he just ran directly down. Let's assume he took out all the same amount of damage. He would have taken less, but... Let's assume all that. He would have died there. Now, that Devourer is kind of low. Maraxis' stun just came up. That Devourer could have been stunned in tower range by Maraxis, or Devourer could have manned down and just backed, and there was a chance Voodoo Jester would have lived, and that Glacius wouldn't have been able to kill him. So, you know, we could have made a better situation just by running down instead of running through these trees, juking, and kind of juking yourself, taking more damage. Um, let's back it up again. So, um, Voodoo Jester decides t um, they've already screwed up here. Voodoo Jester's trying to gain distance. So he's already gone to the right here. Now, he could have, I said he could have run down, but Glacius probably could have blocked him there. So Voodoo Jester's going to the right. What he can do is eat this tree and make it a more direct route. Glacius won't be able to block him by the time he can eat that tree and go down, and he would have been able to get further. But he's not going that way. So we've already screwed up. And this Voodoo Jester needs to get away from Devourer. Maraxis has already thrown his stun at a bad time. How can we make up for that? Well, Maraxis could be blocking Devourer. Just body blocking him, giving this Voodoo Jester some room, like I mentioned earlier. Now, Maraxis has lost health. He's down to 543 health. But keep in mind, Voodoo Jester started with 492 health. So if Maraxis is in there and body blocking Devourer, and they decide to switch to Maraxis. Maraxis already has more health and that shield, so he's going to even get further to the tower, and they're going to live because of that. But they don't. Now, you need you need to realize that it's very important to understand how is best to help your teammate and why this Voodoo Jester is dying. He's dying because he can't get away from the rot. Not from auto attack damage, although auto attack damage is dealing quite a bit of damage. But he's dying because he can't get away from that rot. He's slowed, so it's allowing them to get more auto attacks on him. The main reason he's taking this damage is from Rot. He's taking damage from Rot, but the main source is the auto attacks, but it's because of Rot. So if we can get him away from Rot, we're going to allow him to live. So Maraxis needs to realize that, that he could body block and use his hero's block 
to impede the movement of Devourer, kind of like Pestilence did in the other video blocking Soul Reaper's movement, he can use that to help Voodoo Jester get further away. Just going to advance here because I want to look at exactly what happens right after Voodoo Jester dies. But uh, Voodoo Jester is going to die here. Okay, so now Moraxis is at 471 health. He's going to start trading auto attacks with Devourer. Now, he's frozen here. Okay, let's... He throws out a stun. Okay, here. This is what I want to look at. 385 health. So now he's going to decide. He's thrown out a stun. Both these guys, the stun has just worn off. He's going to trade auto attacks with Devourer. This Maraxis has no way of killing this Devourer. He's just going to trade auto attacks with Devourer. And for every auto attack he trades, Glacius is going to get a free auto attack. So, you know... He's trading, he's trading, he's trading. He definitely took two auto attacks from Devour and one extra auto attack from Glacius. He probably would have taken two if he had just tried to back straight away. So he took, you know, probably a hundred damage just because he decided not to back there. Now, like, there's no cho there's no chance of killing that Devour. Just back. Don't take all that damage. He got some lucky shield procs and, you know, got damage reduced, but just back. Anyways, I hope this video helped you realize how important it is to look at the minimap and try to figure out what the lanes are as soon as you possibly can so that you can prevent a level 1 gank or something like that. And I also hope this video allows you to, um, to see exactly how important it could be to, in those split seconds, figure out why we're in a bad position and what we can do to get out of it and kind of alleviate the pressure that this enemy is putting on us. And that could have been done by Miraxis using his body to block Devour. You know, it would have bought some time and he would have been able to get further away. You know, Voodoo Jester did make a mistake too by uh, juking. He probably should have gone here, ate this tree and gone straight down. Um, and that would have, you know, allowed um, him to get further and further away. And, you know, had he gotten out, out there, it would have been really easy because Marax was already way ahead of Devour. It would have been easy for him just to block Devour and allow that Voodoo Jester to get further. So hopefully I've helped prevented you from getting bloodlusted in uh, the future. Um, once again, this was Niz with another Nizcast video.